afternoon and welcome to Rotary. At this time, I'm going to ask all of you to stand, bow your head, and let's have a moment of silence for Sergeant Michael Chesna. Thank you. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge of allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Amy, God bless America. Bless America, land that I love. Stand beside her and guide her through the light, through the light from above. From the mountains to the prairies to the oceans like the fall. Joe McCool, invocation, please. You can be seated. Uh, this reading is from Dan McCarthy. Dan has spoken to the Brockton Rotary Club uh, twice. Uh, he is a uh, uh, you know, uh, retired from the mental health system in Rhode Island and uh, died a couple of years ago, um, was uh, hit by uh, somebody who was driving under the influence. Um, at any rate, uh, this is uh, something that was, uh, uh, that is uh, compiled by someone who is compiling some of his writings. On June 14, 2013, just three days before he completed his 10th Camino, that's a 500-mile walk across northern Spain, Dan writes about the subtler but deeper realities of the Camino. And Dan writes, Several weeks ago, I was walking the marvelous, the magnificent Maceda, the high plain that inserts days of quiet, flat, meditative walking into the struggles of the Pyrenees, of the beginning of the Camino, and those of the mountains of Lyon that make up the greater part of the last third of the Camino. The way, which is also another name for the Camino, the way was passing through fields of grain that I could not identify, having for some time lost contact with Tracy, the jolly Welchman and grain expert. The grain was very fine, just a slender stalk, no leaves like the very green spouts that support wheat, but tall and thin reeds, light green color at the base, but a rich blue-green in their head with well-formed kernels. I waded into the green field to get a sense of the height of the grain. It was up to my chest, but standing in this field with its dense growth, light green below, almost blue on the surface, stretching far across, far for acres, brought a sudden memory of wading into the ocean at Scarborough on a bright, calm day. And I had an impulse to lower myself into this immensity as I do in the ocean. I resisted the impulse, but was overcome with a sense that I have at the ocean of giving myself to something greater than I. The ocean, somehow the force of life, immense, beautiful, awesome. I felt the Camino as large, as forceful, as full of life as the ocean, as full of life as the mountains I had walked over, as the rivers who had gurgled and raced alongside me as I walked the valleys, as the bird song and wild flowers that had gladdened my days. And I found that life 
in the pilgrims I walked with, and truth be told in myself, I have felt alive on this Camino, strong, well, my body like a walking machine, my mind empty, nothing new uh, there, some will say, uh, and at peace, alive. Night before last, I had the usual pilgrim chain of dinner with people I had gotten to know along the way. Marcelo from Brazil, Deirdre from New Zealand, and Neil from Ireland. Neil apparently has made enough money on the Irish tiger and kept it so that he can live six months a year in Ireland, quote, to keep in touch with my roots, and live in India for six months a place where spirituality is alive, where you can always find people who take spirituality seriously. And then he added that the Camino was like India in Europe. One of the advantages of so many people walking is that every evening you'll have several choices of which table of pilgrims to join for dinner. And so the wine will be poured and the intense conversation will begin. The day's experience, what the Camino means to me, personal reflections on the meaning of the Camino, et cetera, et cetera. And so the Camino gives life, experiences life, comes alive around the common meal, generous with wine each, me each evening. The meal nourishes life, brings life. Pilgrims transmit life to each other. Each of us will label this source of life out of our own spiritual tradition. For Christians, it will be the spirit sent by the Lord who knew what he was doing when he made wine the sacrament of his sharing of life. That life is in all, everywhere, but more vividly available in sacred places as on the Camino of Santiago. On Tuesday coming, uh, the young woman who uh, hit Dan in her car and, and killed him uh, uh, instantly uh, will uh, have experienced her sentence hearing. And I'm asking you to pray for her and her family and for Dan and his family and for all of us who miss him so deeply. I wrote a letter to the judge, as did many of Dan's friends, and we said we will fervently pray that your difficult sentencing decisions regarding Ms. White's sentencing will reflect a loving blend of Dan's wisdom as it relates to justice and mercy. May your decisions be a just, merciful, and fitting tribute to the intense pain we all feel at the loss of our friend Dan. Amen. I'm going to ask Chris Cooney, uh, next Thursday for, for us Rotarians, uh, we don't have the meeting during the day, and of course we're attending the event at night, so Chris, if, I didn't mean to get you with a mouthful there. Take your time. leaders and business leaders from Africa, the continent of Africa. They're here for a third year, uh, for this year, but this is a third class. I've met with them once already. They're a dynamic group from all over the continent. Uh, we will be honoring them next Thursday. Instead of our luncheon here, uh, we will be having a business after hours in Easton uh, at the new Waterpoint condominiums uh, behind the uh, foundry, uh, uh, the uh, Stone Forge restaurant. So uh, uh, the event is free. Uh, again, it's from 5 to 7.30. And uh, it'll be a great, uh, I think, opportunity for Rotarians to uh, highlight uh, what we're all about. Uh, we love it. Uh, and our fellows can also celebrate the things in the community. So again, if you let us know who's coming, so we can have name badges for you. You're welcome to bring guests as well for free. Uh, these condominiums are, are remarkable. Uh, uh, if you've seen what Doug uh, built in, in Easton, uh, this is uh, really I think capstone of his career in terms of the quality and the um, proximity of the water there and all of that. Just a beautiful setting. Uh, Thank you, Chris. 
Uh, Benny, I just saw you walk in. Are you all set, Benny? You have nothing? Okay, all right, thank you. We're gonna move right on then. Right on to the program. So today, we're here to recognize and to award individuals who have a proven track record of service above self. The individuals include members of the Brockton's Fire and Police Department that risk their lives every day to protect ours. Members of the Brockton Public Schools and Massasoit that devote their time in teaching and guiding students to become tomorrow's leaders. Members of the City of Brockton that work or represent the community to help be a better place. On behalf of Brockton Rotary, we congratulate all of you for your outstanding service and achievements. Be proud of all you do. Thank you. So I'm gonna call up our first honoree and supervisor for the Brockton Police Department. Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, first, I'd like to thank the Rotary Club for sponsoring this annual uh, event. Uh, it's a bittersweet day for law enforcement. As everyone knows, we are doing the wake for Sergeant Chestnut, who was uh, murdered on uh, Sunday morning. So. Uh, I appreciate the moment of silence that you guys did uh, prior to the start of the event. I'm here, uh, my name is Brian Maker. I'm the commanding officer of the 4 p.m. to midnight shift. Um, for the last 25 years, I've known Officer Richard Gosha. If I was gonna have an officer to start this job to emulate, it would be Officer Gosha. He's a hard, probably the hardest working police officer I know. He is firm when he needs to be. And we're talking about maybe an arrest. But more importantly, he has compassion that I think goes a long way in uh, law enforcement. Maybe some other guys might have it a little bit less, but I know this guy right here has more compassion for every citizen in the city of Brockton um, than anyone else. His current job is he is the liaison between the police department and the Brockton Housing Authority. Uh, he works with the elderly, um, disabled people, uh, people in recovery. And I'll tell you, every day this guy comes to me uh, wanting to do something uh, for the residents of the housing uh, department. And um, you know, not only is he a great police officer, a great father, he has two, two grandchildren. So uh, he's, the 25 years that I've known him, I'll tell you, he, he, this, this city's lucky to have him. Um, I challenge anyone in this room to call 508-941-0212, which is the commanding officer number, and I'll set anyone up with a ride along with Richie or anyone else that works a four to 12 shift to show how hard the men and women of this police department work. Some people might not think we work hard, but I'll tell you, you leave after eight hours, you'll have a different perspective of the job um, that we do. Everyone knows it's a dangerous job. We all want to go back, you know, to our families also. And the job that he's done for the 25 years that I've known him, excellent. It's 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 above reproach. And I'll tell you, anyone that's coming on to this job right now, we got new new recruits out of the academy, should sit and watch this guy right here, and they'll have a long lasting career. So congratulations, Rich. Thank you very much uh, to all of you. I see a lot of uh, familiar, kind faces here. Um, we sincerely appreciate it. And I know all of you work hard every day. Um, and it's a team effort throughout the city. So um, the most important thing is that we know that there's always good in everyone, and we always find uh, time for each other. But I appreciate the award. Thank you very much. From the record. Next, I'll call the honoree and supervisor for the Brockton Fire Department, please. Uh, good afternoon. 
Um, my name is Scott Albanese. I'm a deputy chief with the fire department. Um, and I'm honored to be here today to introduce you uh, to Firefighter McLaughlin. Um, uh, we wanted to recognize John for his exemplary actions on December 13, 2017, while off duty on en route to uh, work. So I'll just read a little excerpt from the uh, general order from Chief Williams um, to give you some background on what happened that day. So on Wednesday, December 13, 2017, at 0640 hours, a box alarm was transmitted for reported fire at Woodard Ave. Firefighter John McLaughlin was on his way to work and received the broadcast. Firefighter McLaughlin, being close to the address, responded. Upon arrival, he noticed a wheelchair ramp at the front of the house and immediately made his way into the home. Firefighter McLaughlin located a handicapped resident next to a chair that was burning. He then carried the resident outside to safety where they were met by arriving apparatus. <clears throat> uh, John did this on his way to work without the protection of uh, his personal protective equipment. Um, this exemplifies and, and speaks to what the Brockton firefighters do on a daily basis. And uh, I'm honored to be here to, to recognize John today. Not much of talking, but um, some people say I'm a hero. I just happened to be at the right place at the right time, and it turned out pretty well. She was taken to the hospital and she returned home later that day. Um, the training I received in the 19 years I've been on the job, I haven't forgotten. It was just a case of, like I say, right time, right place, happened to be there, and as soon as I saw the handicap ramp, I knew we had an issue. So. Uh, with that said, I'd like to thank everybody for not considering me for this award, mayor, dignitaries, my wife, and fellow police officers, and my boss, Deputy Albanies. Thank you very much, and be known that the city is protected. Okay. Next, I'll call honoree and supervisor for uh, Massasoit Community College. Thank you to the Rotary Club for giving me the opportunity to come here and speak today. My name is Bill Mitchell. I am the interim president at Massasoit Community College, have been so for the last year. Mr. Mayor, I have eight days left. <laughs> So if you need anything, eight days. <laughs> we can still get some things done. I we can. We've gotten a lot done. Uh, but I, just a quick comment before I talk about Jim. I want to thank the, the, the folks who, who protect us on a daily basis. Massasoit Community College has a great relationship with Brockton PD. Um, work very closely hand in hand with our folks to protect us and our students. And unfortunately, we have a great relationship with the fire department too, because we're constantly setting off fire alarms and uh, with student activities, but uh, they respond every single time. So thank you very much for what you do. And Brian, it doesn't go unnoticed. We know the folks on that, that late shift do protect us. at sometimes our most neediest time. So thank you um, for Massachusetts Community College. <laughs> James Lynch, I can't call him, he's Jimmy to me. He'll always be Jimmy. And I have to tell you, so his evaluation was scheduled for today. It was scheduled for 10 a.m. And on, you know, I, I, this was a surprise to him. And in his evaluation, I added at the last minute when we found out that he, you know, we had nominated him, he was gonna receive the award, I put it in his evaluation. So we canceled his evaluation this morning so we wouldn't give it away the secret, but your evaluation is happening at 2 o'clock. Is that correct? Yes, sir. All right. He and it's, he thought he was going home. He gets the award and goes home. He's going to, to the place in downtown Brockton. Are they open tonight, Chris? Anyway, so Jimmy. Jimmy's the director of marketing at Massasoit, a critical position. Even more critical is competition for students over the past 10 or 15 years has really ramped up. And we're in the business for competing with students. And, and Jim certainly does a, a wonderful job there, but it's, it's the other things that Jim does. He is also the 
and I'm not sure it's in your job description, but he's a school photographer, and he's a wonderful photographer. Any event at Massasoit that goes on to honor our students or outside folks, Jim's there taking pictures. And he does this in the community as well. He volunteers. He's very uh, big into the robotics program over at Bridgewater Rainham. He volunteers for the Mass Broadcasters Hall of Fame. Anytime there are pictures to be taken, Jim is there. And so he is documenting the history of Massasoit. And history is incredibly important, and I'm very grateful for that as well. Some of us around the college refer to Jim as the Stanley Bowman of Massasoit. <laughs> and Jim, you are, you are documenting history for us to look back upon in, in 20 years from now and wondering who all those people are in the picture. But I want to thank Jim and, and, and thank the Rotary. What a well-deserved honor to just a genuinely good guy who gives everything he has to the college and everything he has to the community in which the college lives. So congratulations, Jim. Jimmy, thank you. <clears throat> He's also an experienced gardener. He makes the best pickles. So if you like pickles, hit them up afterwards. Uh, for a, a marketing professional, I am going to have very little to say. Uh, but I want to thank the Brockton Rotary and my friends and colleagues at Massasoit for this honor. Uh, you know, serving and helping um, young people has been something I've always been passionate about, and I look forward to uh, continuing to do that. Thank you all very much. Take a picture, gentlemen. Go, take a picture. Next, the honoree and supervisor for Brockton Community at Large. Vinny, come on up, Vinny. Thank you uh, very much for the opportunity to recognize one of the very uh, special people in, in this community. Um, when, when I received the, um, uh, the notification of, uh, uh, for nominations for today's uh, ceremony, I passed around with our staff at the Y. And I will tell you that uh, I think within minutes, the emails began coming back as to uh, who we should uh, nominate. And uh, Ernie, I can tell you that uh, it was a unanimous vote of uh, all of your friends, and many of whom I know that you have uh, a long, long uh, relationship. Uh, I certainly appreciate this opportunity to tell you a little bit more about um, uh, Ernie and uh, really what uh, he means uh, to us at the Y, but more importantly, what I, uh, what I know he means to the city of Brockton and um, so many things that uh, he has been involved with. Um, I've known Ernie now for, I've been in town for 26 years, and I think you were one of the first, uh, first folks that uh, I had an opportunity to meet Ernie. So, but let me tell you a little bit about this. Um, Ernie truly embodies the spirit of Brockton. Uh, born and raised in the city of Brockton, the city of champions, Ernie has spent his entire life committed to making this community a safer place for all. Early on in his career, he worked at the Y in the juvenile justice arena in our outreach and tracking program, and we believe this is where his passion for community policing and collaboration was born. Soon after, he joined the Brockton Police Department and has been protecting his fellow Brocktonians, friends, and neighbors in that capacity. Ernie is relentless in his pursuit of a safer Brockton. You can find him at the mall on a Friday night working the detail, volunteering at the Department of Children and Families event or responding to a crisis, but you never see him sleeping. He is well known to the community through his expertise of the streets, strong reputation, and engaging personality. 
Ernie tireless, tirelessly serves the community above and beyond his typical responsibility. He also collaborates with so many organizations, certainly the uh, Brockton School System, the District Attorney's Office, Department of Children and Families, Department of Youth Services, the State Police, um, our own um, um, Safe Corners of Violence Prevention Program, and other city in initiatives focused on gang intervention and substance prevention, substance abuse prevention. A lifelong athlete and a longtime YMCA member, Ernie is an exemplary police officer, a role model for youth, and a role model citizen in our community. Whether he's on or off duty, Ernie Bell is devoted to trying to make his home city a much better place. Thank you so much for your lifelong and outstanding service to our community, Ernie. Deeply appreciated and um, well deserved. I'm not one for speaking. <laughs> um, I really appreciate uh, the Rotary Club and the YMCA honoring me. Um, first thing I want to say, I've been on the police department for over 20 something years. And uh, I've known Lieutenant Maker for all those years. I never agreed with him until today. <laughs> uh, I grew up with Richie Gulsha, Officer Gulsha. Um, he on the job many years before me, but when I did get on, I kind of followed in his footsteps. He's, what Brian said today, what Lieutenant Maker said today is true about Richie Gulch. He's a great, he's a great guy, a great officer. After all these years, he's still doing it, which is amazing. Um, I also want to thank, uh, I would say the YMCA family. What do I mean by that is members. Uh, over the years, uh, all the things I've learned about community service, uh, community awareness came from the Y or people in the Y. Um, prime example is Mark Lindy's father, David Lindy. He was an inspiration to me, guided me, directed me. I ended up at UMass Amherst because of him. Uh, Greg Howells, Vivian Renee, um, and, and the list goes on and on. Steve Green from WB Masons, uh, he was an inspiration. Um, it, it seems like everything that I've learned as a young adult it came through the why, um, and that's why I stuck with it. I think I was fortunate enough to find a place I could call home, a second home, um, uh, and it was the YMCA. And I just want to thank uh, Benny for honoring me, uh, and I just want to thank the YMCA and the city of Brockton because uh, it's a nice place to be. I'm building a new house too, Mr. Mayor. Come on with the taxes, though. <laughs> thank you. Next, I would ask Superintendent Kathy Smith to please come up. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. I'm actually gonna do something a little bit different. Uh, I'm gonna invite the principal of Brockton High School, and I'd like you to welcome Dr. Cliff Murray to come join me. The reason I do that is um, our member, uh, Joyce Boris, uh, a wonderful uh, teacher at Brockton High School. So personally, I have to tell you that I met Joyce many, many years ago when she was in the nursing field and our two daughters were involved in school activities together. She was that mother that always shamed me. She was the one doing the Girl Scouts and making sure that the kids had activities at her house. And I was lucky that I could, you know, find something for the kids to do. So she was just one of those people that you truly aspired to be because of her motivation, her fun, uh, just always somebody very genuine. Unfortunately, she can't be with us today. She is actually assisting a son out of state that had a minor accident, and she's nursing him, nursing him back to health. But she was a, a mid-career changer. 
And sometimes those are our best teachers, teachers that have been out in the business world, been out in a different career, and bring those skills set to the children uh, at Brockton High School. She is truly uh, somebody that brings a whole nother level, and I would like Dr. Murray to talk to you about our teacher and our award winner today, Joyce Voris. I'm all done. Uh, good afternoon, and again, congratulations to all the other recipients. It really is an honor. I've had the privilege of being here several times with some of my staff in various buildings, and I think it means a lot when we can identify folks who not only uh, give to the Brockton Public Schools, but to the community as a whole. Joyce is one of those unique people who doesn't uh, worry about the intelligence level of her students or where they come from. She cares about every single child she works with. We have an award at the end of the year voted on by the faculty and the students kind of recognizing a specific faculty member with uh, our students that are seniors. And there was uh, literally a competition between the students in our science classes and the Envirothon team to make sure that she was the nominee. Recognized by the state and by Plymouth County with her efforts, not only in the community of Brockton, but the uh, Commonwealth as well um, with regards to the environment. Uh, I know that she is disappointed that she can't be here. Uh, service means a lot to her. She's Brockton born and bred, and as the superintendent alluded to, uh, a career changer. So she is very invested, and I think that's one of the key themes that you'll see today in the community. And I think that's what's special about the Rotary, about the folks that we honor here today. And very quickly, as principal of my third building, I too would like to uh, comment about the support and the security, the sense of belonging that we feel when we call upon uh, our first responders, either the police or the fire. These are uh, gentlemen and uh, women who come and perform these duties with poise, uh, with class, and with always uh, their uh, thoughts and hearts on doing what's best for our students. So it's really a fantastic day. But I know Joyce is very privileged and feels very honored to be in this group, so thank you. Thank you so much. Next, I would call Mayor Bill Carpenter, please come. Thank you, Richard. Well, good afternoon, everyone. It's uh, great to be here with you. I apologize for being a little late. I very rarely miss a meal, so I, it was uh, not, not characteristic for me to be late for lunch. So um, if you'll indulge me for just a minute, um, other than Jim, all of the other uh, honorees today uh, work for the city uh, in some capacity. So I, I would just like to make brief comments and uh, uh, t to the superintendent, Cliff, I'm sure that uh, Joyce is a great example of many, many, many uh, great teachers we have in the Brockton Public Schools. And at a time that you know we are fighting uh, to get the proper funding for our public schools, uh, I think it's important to remind everyone that the most valuable asset we have in the schools are the people that are in the classrooms and and supporting the people in the classrooms. So. Uh, I, I think that award does that for us. Um, this is my fifth year participating in this, and uh, what I love about uh, the Rotary sponsoring this event each year. You can't hear you? Let me try. Is this the one that, no, which, which one is the house mic? All right. There we go. Is that better? All right. Usually people are trying to tune me out, Sisto, not actually pay attention to what I'm saying. That's, yeah. <laughs> uh, what I love about what the Rotary Club does with this event every year is it, it gives you all just a little glimpse of the types of folks that I have the privilege to work with every day and, and to see things that I get to see uh, every day. And uh, teachers in the classroom, uh, the act of uh, heroism uh, performed by John. Um, I, I get to see those acts on a regular basis, and I remember the morning of that fire on, on Woodard and, and uh, 
the fact that had he not been nearby and had he not been willing at great risk to himself to run into that building without his protective gear and to carry a disabled person out, that outcome that day could have been dramatically different. And uh, we appreciate that single act of heroism, but also the, uh, the things that the firefighters do for us uh, every day. And uh, I think the nature of their job, uh, just like with police officers, has changed over the years. I, I don't think we could have ever imagined 10 years ago that they would be um, responding to as many drug overdose calls as they do today and, and save people's lives using Narcan. Uh, but w whatever the threat of the risk is, the fire department is there. And uh, then our, for our police officers, uh, both Richie and Ernie, I, I, I know very well. Uh, they are both great police officers. Richie and I were together yesterday at an event at one of the housing authority uh, complexes. I think Richie, uh, Richie exemplified community policing long before it was in style. And uh, you know, that's a phrase that's thrown around a lot nowadays, but I think Richie's been doing that for a long time, and particularly with his work on the Housing Authority properties. He's there, he's present. The people that live in those complexes, they know him, they trust him, they go to him when they need him or when they need help with something. And uh, I kidded around yesterday, but it's really true that uh, when I go to a, an event at one of the BHA properties, that you know Richie is the most popular guy in the room. And he really is because the residents all know him and they trust him. And, and I think you can't say anything more about community policing than that. And uh, Ernie's role is a little bit different, but equally important. And, uh, you know, Ernie's done a lot of different things, but the work he does with, you know, warrant apprehension and getting bad guys off the street on a daily basis. And I cross paths with Ernie at raids and crime scenes, and he's always there. And I think the description really hit his strength and that is uh, his just knowledge of the people and places in the city. And um, I'll, I'll sometimes be privy to some of the conversations and the, the extent of the intelligence that someone like Ernie has about some of the folks he's interacting with. Um, and he really brings the strength. We're doing a lot of work today with the state police and the feds and the county, but what they need and what Ernie provides is that boots on the ground, on the streets intelligence. He knows who drives what car, who they hang around with, where they live, where we would probably find them at this time of the day. And he has that type of just working knowledge uh, that is invaluable to all of the law enforcement agencies that uh, work here in the city. And it's a, just an honor and a privilege to work alongside all of these, and particularly as Lieutenant Maker said on a day uh, when we are mourning Sergeant Chesna uh, in Weymouth, uh, I think it just realizes that whether it's uh, someone like John running into a building or one of our police officers responding to a 911 call, they never know what they're walking into. They never have any idea, uh, but they go in regardless. And uh, I have all the respect in the world for all of you. Uh, so. The award that I have an opportunity to present today, uh, honoring a city employee, I think hopefully is a great example of what the Rotary Club tries to do with this program. And that is to recognize and honor some of the great folks that work with us every day that you normally don't get to hear about. That they do great work for all the right reasons, none of which is public recognition. And it's great that the Rotary Club takes the time each year to allow us to at least recognize a handful uh, each year. Uh, I get complimented all the time. I don't know how many golfers we have here, uh, but we, we now have like the best municipal golf course in the entire state. And uh, it didn't happen overnight and it didn't happen without a lot of hard work. Uh, but I, I don't think I can get through a day without receiving a compliment about what great shape the golf course is in. Um, when I come to events here at Thorny Lee, and a lot of events are held here, uh, I quite often say that it's a pleasure to be here at the second nicest golf course in the city. <laughs> and I mean it, uh, because that's, that's how great DW Field Course is today. And uh, 
Kurt came on board at, at Tim's recommendation. I want to recommend Paul Katumas, our golf pro, and Tim Carpenter, our superintendent of parks, uh, are here with Kurt today. Um, they've built a great team. And I think over at that golf course, you know, Kurt is the guy that you don't see who's doing all the hard work. I, I was over there, one of Kurt's best projects, I think, since he got here. When Kurt came in, we had this um, irrigation system that basically didn't work. It, it, you know, we had all these sprinkler heads, but if you turned it on, 90% of them, nothing came out of them. Uh, it's, it was a very complex system, uh, and, it, and it needed a lot of work. And uh, I think it was at my first, your first year here, Kurt, I was over at the course one day. It was pouring rain. There weren't very many people there. And I looked out, and Kurt was out in a fairway in the pouring rain working on the irrigation system. And I just think that shows the kind of commitment he's had. I know he's got a fancy title, superintendent of golf. Um, but I really look at Kurt, and what I see is a working foreman, uh, someone who's out there that's providing the supervision and the guidance, but getting his hands dirty along with the rest of the crew at the same time. And uh, leaders like that are worth their weight in gold. So I, I truly appreciate what everyone has done over at the golf course to, to bring it back. Uh, to what it should be and it it is one of our great assets in the city and people visit Brockton every day to come play golf at, at D-Dub and they when they come from out of the city they go home with a much different impression and perception of what Brockton is all about you know I, I can't tell you how many times I've been at that golf course and someone will say to me are we really in Brockton you know because the, the perception and the reality is so different but the great golfing experience they have at DW does help change people's perceptions of the city when they're visiting the city. So uh, it's my pleasure this year to recognize and honor Kirk Calderwood as our City Employee of the Year. Well, thank you for having me here today. Um, Mr. Mayor, uh, thank you very much for this honor. Um, the Rotary Club, I really appreciate it. Um, like Mr. Mayor said, I'm behind the scenes, so I don't usually have a lot to say. So, uh, but we, we created a great team over at DW Field, and uh, you know, the guys, everybody there, uh, chips in, does a great job. From the mayor, giving us the funds that we need to do the work we need to get the course and the shape it needs to be in. Uh, Tim Carpenter, who brought me on board and uh, really has helped me tremendously uh, get the job that I need to do done. And, uh, you know, Paul came on and um, really has just done wonders with, uh, you know, all the clinics, the veterans clinics, the children, uh, the first tee. Um, we're getting a lot of children involved up there. and. That's what we're trying to do is grow the game of golf, and um, I really do appreciate this award today, so thank you very much. Okay, that does conclude our, our meeting today, and uh, on behalf of Brockton Rotary, we want to thank all of you for coming today, joining us to help honor some of Brockton's finest. Thank you.